Pacifica Pamela Kazel is a 15-year-old princess of the royal family. She complains to her older adopted siblings about not being able to rest for a bit and take a bath. Her siblings Shannon and Raquel Casual laugh off her complaints and keep moving, with them wanting to keep more distance between them and their pursuers. Just then, hooded bandits armed with farming tools block their path. Everyone's demeanor changes from this with them not wanting to fight. The two older siblings get out of the carriage to deal with them. Raquel uses a barrier to push them away, while Shan uses the butt of his sword to disarm them. As Pacifica is walking out the carriage, a boy named Arletti Christopher rudely asks the girl, why isn't she fighting? When it's done, Shannon turns around to see the boy, and he's ready to fight. But Christopher simply walks away. Originally, Pamela was thrown off the side of a cliff when she was just a baby. Luckily, she survived, and she was adopted by the Cassell family, with her being the youngest child. She's a young and innocent girl, despite all the things that have been happening to her. Pacifica questions how much suffering can occur due to her existence, and she blames herself for it. She's prophesied to destroy the world at age 16. In a weirdly shaped red building, a leader of an organization is talking about his failed attempt to eliminate the girl, that he orders the townspeople to bring her here. Meanwhile, Pacifica is complaining about her rather modest meal, with of course being scolded by Shannon. Pacifica overhears some girls her age practicing the multiplication skills, making her wish she had a normal life like them, but she gets back to her usual antics to make sure that Shannon isn't worried about her. The woman from before makes her appearance with her actually being Pacifica's auntie, Diana. She allows the girl to have a bath, and she leaves her baby with the older siblings while she checks on the bath. The two women catch up with each other, with them last seeing each other three years ago. Diana asks Pacifica to help her with the task, leaving her older siblings. As they're walking, Pacifica starts to mention all the times that the older woman has done her a favor, with this being because her father turned to this woman after their mother died, making her the new caretaker of the children. With her being responsible for providing food, comfort, as well as checking on them when they're ill, Diana acted as if she was the foster mother or second mother to her. Diana takes her to the shrine, which leads Pacifica to suspect something's a little bit amiss. Shannon and Raquel can't find the two, and they don't want to suspect that Diana was plotting something, but she might have. The two go off searching for her, splitting up. Raquel runs into Christopher, with the girl starting up a cheerful conversation boy. The leader of this temple arrives to question if she's really the scrap princess destined to destroy the world. Diana leaves Pacifica with the man, with Pacifica questioning why would she do this. Diana screams that she did it for the good of the kingdom, saying the girl should have been blaming herself for all this. The man wonders why Diana would be feeling shame from all this, calling her a good Samaritan for it. He then claims that Pacifica's entire existence is a sin, blaming her father's death as a result of him protecting her. The man in red uses magic to block her path, but luckily Raquel breaks the door, getting there right in time. She first apologizes to the man, because she now has to put him out of commission. He questions what does she mean by this, but then goes for a spell, and every time he starts to say his lightning spell, he's blasted away, with Raquel's spell only taking five words to say, while his is like a monologue. He calls her spell blasphemy, and a disrespect to their god, Raquel understands his complaint and apologizes for it, and then one taps him with the even shorter spell. Christopher sees this man lying on the ground, and is annoyed that the church would send such a weak coward to go fight the girl, believing that he'll be the one to finish the job. That night, Pacifica goes to talk to Shannon, wondering if her real parents ever gave her a name, wishing she could have lived an ordinary life back in their village, blaming herself because now her family's on the run, with this meaning that Shannon can't run their family weapon shop. She asks if she died, would this all be over? Shannon walks away, avoiding to give an answer, but the girl's persistent, wanting to hear his thoughts on the situation. He finds it to be complicated in nature, but he turns around because he's now on guard. The boy from earlier makes his appearance, and the two have their battle. Christopher is a part of the royal forces, in a special ops unit, opposite an arrow, with him being the leader. Raquel cheerfully walks out to greet the man. Chris decides that he can't take both of them all at the same time, so he'll be leaving, but first, he wants to know why the two of them are protecting that abomination of a girl. Shannon recognizes her as his little sister, with her father and mother protecting her, and hoping that one day she can grow up and people will grow to love her. Pacifica takes the blade and asks Shannon if this revelation ever did occur, that he'd be the one to take her out. The next day, she blushingly says that she loves the boy, with him already knowing, treating the girl more like his little sister rather than a partner. In a secret underground passage, Chris takes a keel, meeting his major, with the man asking how is his report coming along, and he's told not to let his personal feelings cloud his judgement his mission. Meanwhile, our heroes unwind a bit from their travels, Raquel is reading her favourite book, Pacifica eats some rice balls, and Shannon is doing the laundry, a batch of men on horseback ride up to them. The leader compliments the girl, and then asks if she has anything sweet for the men. She looks at him and offers some pickled plums, but they just end up laughing at her. He turns to Shannon, telling him to leave all his belongings here, and he can stay alive, with Shannon saying the same back to him. No one from the group is taking this threat serious, 
Both parties are interrupted, however, as a loud, moral bound boy tells the bandits to leave, as he's promised to protect the innocent in the name of their god, with him riding down a cliff on a horse. The boy overshoots his landing, however, crashing to a barn. By the time the bandits turn around, Shannon already knocks them out with a barrel. As they leave, Pacifica looks over and sees the boy's horse, asking if he's okay. He cheerfully confirms that he's fine, and he's soon chasing after them, asking to join their journey, with him injuring himself again. He then tries to propose to Pacifica, but is then whacked on the head. The boy's name is Lepold Leo Scorpius, being the eldest son of the Baron. He's on a training tour at the moment, but someday he wishes to join the Amber Knights, being an elite group of cavaliers, with them being the strongest people in existence. He vows to protect Pacifica until they reach the bridge, but Shannon won't allow this. Leo's on a mission to find Doyle Barrett, being the retired second commander of the Amber Knights, with him wanting to hear the tales of their legend. Apparently, a rumor went around that the Scrap Princess put a curse on him. Leo doesn't know that the girl in front of him is the Scrap Princess, with him believing that she doesn't even exist. Shannon wishes to know what does he find so appealing in his little sister, with the boy feeling an air of dignity in the girl, finding a hint of nobility that most commoners simply just don't have. Soon the two of them go play in the water while Raquel tries to convince Shannon that they should go pursue this Doyle person, seeing that they don't have any information about Pacifica's origins, so this man could explain what happened. An old woman sees them playing in the water and soon runs as far as her brittle legs can carry her to warn them of the dangers in the water. The two of them can't hear the old woman, however, and they're soon attacked by a giant toad. Leo is about to attack the toad, but the woman tells them that that's their guardian. When Shannon and Raquel are about to react, a purple-haired like hobbit girl warns them that this creature is something they call a dragon. Understandably, everyone is confused by this. The girl soon blasts the dragon on top of the head with a mystical beam, begging it to disappear. The girl flies over to Pacifica and tells her that this is their guardian and that she needs to tell her to go to sleep. Pacifica is confused by this, but goes along with and tells the guardian to go to sleep. The spirit thanks her, and she does so. When they get back to the shore, the old woman asks what have they done to their guardian, with them being unsure exactly about what happened, but say she's asleep. She's thankful, and then next demands why are they here. Afterwards, she gives them a little map about where they can find this man they're looking for. Shannon, Leo, and Pacifica go to Doyle's house, where they learn that he's not the same knight captain that he was before. Pacifica gets mad by his response, storming off, but soon falls off a cliff, needing the man's help to patch her back up. Leo goes again about how valiant and righteous this man was in his parents' stories. Doyo asks the boy a simple question about if he's ever taken a life before, or maybe taken the life of someone you couldn't catch, or maybe taken the life of someone who was innocent or defenseless. The man knows there's no true absolute right or absolute wrong, with all his justice talk being a false belief. When they get back, they eat some of the old woman's cooking, and she thanks them for appeasing their guardian, and then tells them the reason why Doyle is like this now. 15 years ago, I don't know, cool. 15 years ago, Doyle was in charge of disposing of the baby princess, that being the scrap princess. He saw no abomination in the child, but an innocent life. He dropped her into the cliff, but he regrets it. The next day, there's a blocked road forcing them to pass through a checkpoint. Leo goes to go check out what's going on with the guards. Armed men are checking all the carriages, with there being a rumor saying that the scrap princess is still alive. When he informs the rest of the party, when he goes back to inform the rest of his party, they decide it's time to ditch the boy, as Pacifica has a new disguise on. Seeing this makes him think that they're a group of traveling performers. At the gates, the captain looks at the description his supervisors gave him, and he knows that this girl must be the scrap princess in disguise. The party realizes that they're cornered, but luckily, Leo tags along with them, but they're making it sound like they're still a traveling circus. The guards see his crest. When the guards see him, they have to stand down. Since he comes from a noble house that has a crest, the party stays at an inn with them not doing so in a very long time. Pacifica wishes to go out for dinner, but Shannon advises against this, with them being out of money. With this making the two siblings start their usual bickering, Winnie is uninterested in their conversation and gets back to work. But when Pacifica hears the girl's attitude, she takes a liking to her. In reality, Winnie is a very introverted girl, but they're not usually having these outbursts. In truth, she's not used to talking to people. From seeing this, her boss lets her have a break so that she can show them around the place. Raquel and Shannon think about the idea of finding work, so Raquel decides to tag along with them. Winnie is sad that all she does is take care of people who are just going to leave her, but the girl never setting foot outside of Taurus. Raquel stares at a costume that she finds very cute, and the two girls, Pacifica and Raquel, go work for Mr. Subi Buns. The owner is quite forward thinking, with them winning the franchise all over the place with their mascot, Mr. Subibun. With a line of desserts, cater after the dinosaur, 
but all the customers run away from the mascot. Markel is able to have the traveling men sample her buns. Soon, all the men marvel over her, buying all their supply. Winnie laughs at Pacifica's failed attempts to have them sample, so Pacifica decides to get a new job. When Leo tries to tag along, Raquel has him help her with a part-time job. Our heroes soon get a job at the inn, with Raquel cooking and Shannon doing all the scrubbing in the baths. The innkeeper thanks Raquel, with him never seeing Winnie look so happy. The innkeeper took her in after her parents died, and ever since then, she's been very sad. Winya and Pacifica start to bond, with them both being unable to say what they really mean to people, forced to bottle up their emotions. Zephy reappears to inform Shannon that someone dangerous is following them. Hearing this, the party packs up their gear, with well, this is making Winya very sad. Chris comes to the inn to ask where they're hiding them. When Winya lies about seeing them, he then attacks her and the innkeeper. When he wakes up, the innkeeper runs over to see if he can catch up to Shannon's cart, to ask if he can bring back Winya, with her being taken by a strange boy in a military outfit. He then gives him a map of the Valley of the Glass. Chris decides to tell Winya the revelation of the St. Grindel, with this being Pacifica's origins. The queen gave birth to two twins, and the prophecy says that they must get rid of the girl, or she's gonna bring ruin to the land on her destined day. So this is where we're gonna leave off in today's video. If you liked today's video, here's another one just like it, so go check it out. I'm gonna be breaking down this anime into multiple parts. Now if you liked today's video, make sure to like the video, and also subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading daily videos just like this one. So I'll see you next time.